hi welcome to linda's tv show if it is your first time of stopping by or coming across my youtube channel you are highly welcome this is the home of news please click on that red button that says subscribe beside the red button is a notification bell turn the bell on so that anytime i upload a new video you will be the first person to check it out and after watching the video you are free to leave your comment constructively and tell me what you think about the video and the channel as we hop into today's exciting video let's watch this video together okay we are joined live with ipob lead council barista if i your four uh to updating us what transpired today in the appellate court recall that today was rescheduled making a u-turn regarding uh, the first date given that is october 11 it was rescheduled today to hearing what um, argument the defense counsels have uh, in the case of FGN versus Namdekano. So we are here live uh, with uh, the IPOB lead counsel and we hope uh, he would furnish us, us with what transpired today in court. Barista, over to you please. <coughs> Thank you so much for having me on your platform. Um, I'll be as brief as possible because I have other uh, compelling uh, things to attend to. But, um, we need to clarify our people about what has what been in court today. First of all, let me use this opportunity to make this clarification regarding the the rescheduling of the case from 11th of October to today. So you understand that when we file this appeal, in view of the nature of the appeal and the need to hear the matter speedily, uh, we have an application we'll file under what they call fast track rule of the court of appeal. So for accelerated hearing of this appeal and also for time abridgement. So and also have a letter we wrote so so president of the court of appeal requesting for the matter to be heard, giving a spiritual hearing. So and we were given a date in October then. Uh, within that intervening period, the federal government filed a responding brief with an application to for extension of time to regularize what they file outside time allow under the rules of court appeal. So and also we replied immediately. So I believe his lordship um, during the period they were looking at the file and uh, observe we have an application for a certain hearing of the matter brought on portion to fast track rules of the file or court appeal. So that was basically informed why the, the matter was brought forward. So, and the appeal was had today. If you're if you in court today, if you have opportunity, opportunity to be inside the court, of course, you've seen things yourself today. So, the appeal was had on the merit. So, and um, let me also correct, because I, I, my attention was also adverted to publication made by the, by the BBC to the fact that um, one application of five was struck out, and that was where they stopped at that point. So. It was an application for a certain hearing of this appeal and time abridgement. They haven't so much to consider it on the merits. The court said, by which the father briefs have been a chair stage and parties are now before the court, that that application has been overtaken by event because the, what actually we are asking the court to do has been done in practice. We are asking the court to hear this matter expeditiously uh, uh, and also to abridge time, provide under the roof for appeal to be had. So having brought that matter forward from October 11th to September 13th, the court has technically granted an application and portion to which it was, at least on the record of the court, uh, moved and they struck out, applied to be withdrawn. So the court had the application on the merits. And the court was very emphatic about the, uh, about his lordship's disposition to deliver judgment in this case as quickly as possible. It, that was the first observation the court made. The court is... Also, not mindful of the fact that under the Court of Appeal rules and also extant laws, that they have 19 days from today to deliver judgment. But the court was very emphatic that this appeal, can, the judgment on this appeal, we may not, not be surprised that call of, if they have asked us to come back in this for if uh, we receive any notice from the court in this 14 days to, for them to be delivered. The court observed, observed that. So, and they were emphatic that it was, 
the, uh, the that appeal will definitely will be delivered as quick as possible. So uh, my happiness today is that the argument was exhaustively canvassed on the merit. An operation was marvelously presented, adopted, done by his, by the next circle, SIM. All bond issues of laws and fat and weird clarifications are needed. We are made in open court. So and it became very clear to the court about what also what brought us to the court. While we are challenging the, the seven count charge being returned by the Federal High Court. So and also the issue of extraordinary rendition of Onye and the can was also discussed today. And thankfully, for the first time, for the first time, the federal government, ably represented by the council from the AG Federation's office, admitted before the court that Nanikano was actually kidnapped by the federal government in Kenya and brought here to come and face the trial. So obviously, I, I believe that by the time he was making that <coughs> submission, he did not understand the implication of that dialogue of argument, but he has made a point. And also, furthermore, you also admitted before the court today that they've amended this charge seven consecutive times. Even the court of it was worried. Say, uh -uh. In open court, you're admit, admitting. You're admitting before this court that they amended the charge seven count time, uh, seven consecutive times. What are you trying? What, what are you trying to tell? What are you trying to? What are you trying to? What message are you trying to pass to the public? So if you're amending, if I'm amending the charge, and respondents are filing applications, probably for one reason or the other, you won't blame them. Because you cost it. These are things that were shouted out in the open court today. So, and you should also understand that part, reason, part of fundamental grounds we are raising this, we are in the court of appeal for this lawsuit to determine, was for the court to determine the issue of external edition of Mazin Nanikan. In, in flagrant violation of section 15 of Exploration of, of Act, LFN 204 of Nigeria. Because at the point he was abducted in Kenya, there are laid down rules under the law which through which process we brought into this country. Also, don't forget the fact that Nan Nikano never traveled to Kenya on his own. No. Nan Nikano or never traveled to outside the country. There was a clear, a visible attempt to eliminate him sometime on September 14th, from September 14th, 10th to 14th of, September, of September 2017. And by out of by sheer out of providence, he escaped being killed. Of course, evidence abounds. Over 28 persons innocent and harmed civilians were murdered in his home by Nigeria by the soldiers who were there to kill him. So now, all the facts led into what transpired in his home on 14th of September, precisely, was also captured in in affidavit evidence, in affidavit and affidavit evidence will also present before the court. Now, he's not in Kenya. Before you talk about bringing him to this country. There are laws that said he must be subjected to extra extradition proceedings. That's number one. Or the Kenyan government must have consented for him to be to be arrested and brought to this country. But as I speak to you, let me mention this to you. We have a process filed by Nefra, by the Kenyan government, the Kenyan government in the matter, an action initiated against the government of Kenya for their uh, for their role in the abduction, kidnapping. And extraordinary rendition of Nandikano to Nigeria. We have a process before going on in their court, which they maintain, as I speak to you today, can government maintain from record available to them that Nandikano is still in, still in Kenya? Take I hope you understand, technically, you understand what it means. That is still in Kenya. So apparently, telling the world that they're not part of what, what part of the of the of the of the of the of the violent manner in which he was abducted and brought to this country, it wasn't brought to attention. That they, they, they are trying to exonerate themselves. So in that court, in that in that case, so now by admitting before the open before in open court today during submission by a federal government lawyer that they abducted in the and brought him here to face justice, that they've not committed any offence. If we are talking about violation of international laws, to which Nigeria is a signatory to, is part of is also is a signatory to, to, the, to the laws. So these are what we are talking about. So and that was admitted in open court today by the right to the federal government. So and remember, don't forget that this is the first grand, first issue listed for his lordship to determine whether the manner in which Onion Dumas Nakano was adopted in Kenya and subsequently brought into this country, whether in that man, whether uh, on the face of that that, act, about that, that that action taken by the federal government, 
Whether they, he can face the trial, he can face the child that made the son can charge, I mean, that son today, I made it against him, file a profile against him. And the answer is no. Because section 15 of the restoration act is clear that even if the person is lawfully brought into this country, that, that section is a stage where someone has passed through the process of restoration proceedings and subsequently brought into this country lawfully. That even when it's brought into this country lawfully, that a person will only face the charge for which for, 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 for offenses allegedly committed before he escaped from escaped from, 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 from trial. But in this case, he was not brought into this country for lawfully. He was falsely arrested in Kenya, tortured, before he, he was also uh, secretly brought into this country. Then now, these are these these actions were taken by the Nigerian government in care of violation of international laws. Right. Now, going forward, going forward. The federal government of Nigeria has also amended the Thousand Prevention Act of late, which is now in the first. That section, section 23F of that law, says that in the event of this kind of situation, where is, is, is a national, a national of another country is abducted from a different country in violation of extant international laws and covenants, that that country, that country, that that constant breach of that law eh, has committed an act of terrorism against that, that person. So, as it stands today, Nam De Kano is a victim of terrorism. So, this is a part of argument that which also have been brought before the Court of Appeal today. And I, I doubt, and I'm trying to find out how they're going to escape it. So, because the facts speak for itself. And that appellate brief and small brief filed to the fact effect is very exhaustive on that point. And other issues of laws will raise. That has to do with no primary officer case established before the court before now they cannot the pro evidence file before the lower court cannot sustain the bogus charge and allegation against him. If you are in court, when the responding counsel was trying to make it, what about pro evidence that the, 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 the trial has to go on before the before the court determine whether the pro evidence attached to the charge attached to the charge can sustain it. The court was curious, his lordship was close to find out from him what led to the striking out of eight count, out of 15 count original file. And he was trying to, he was beating up, he was struggling to answer that question. At the end of the day, he came back to the to, 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 to simple truth that the providence attached to the child cannot sustain the child. And that was the reason why the eight count out of 15 count was struck out, the Benny seven. And that is why we are in court of appeal today to tell the court, my lord, that even the evidence this was relying upon has been evidence, statement of witnesses, unnamed witnesses, filed in court since 2000, December 2015. That's only the evidence they have before the court in prosecuting this matter. They've not filed for the evidence. In all this amendment that have been effecting, from five count amendment to seven count, from seven count to fifteen count, before it was eventually returned to, to uh, it was struck out many seven. Yes. Um, so we understand, or should I say, um, have rumors uh, or unconfirmed information regarding the remaining seven count charge. What did the three wise men of the appellate court uh, had had to say about it? The, the, the point that's why we're in court. That's why we're in court. That the actions of um, were in court of appeal to challenge the remaining seven count charge on the grounds listed on grounds of law, facts, and misland facts. So, which has been have argued on the merit by his leadership today. So, the arguments was taken from both sides, and uh, we are with, we are with judgment until. When the is delivered, we don't know what they say about the appeal. But we are strongly and firmly believing that appeal, this appeal, with God, God being on our side, will be found meritorious, and then that cannot be set free. Thank you. Okay. Um, we want to know questions uh, bound regarding the health status of uh, Amazon and the Kano, the IPOB leader. Oh, the, 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 his health condition is part of the reason why we are in court of appeal. Uh, actually, you, of course, you may have noticed that we have an application for this bail, which we mentioned today before the Court of Appeal. We've, we've caught the historship in their wisdom. We have the view that since the main case is right for hearing, which is the main appeal, so it's appeal, that it would be better for us to go into the battlefield and sort it out. Then, it didn't strike out that application. Then, on the door of judgment, if the judgment goes one way or the other, 
If the government says the seven count charge remaining are now dismissed, then that's the end of the case. It's settled. Then the Lordship said, okay, well, this and that, this and that happened. They cannot take a prison for bail. That will be another option. But now, of that, and the, in that application for bail, we've excessively discussed the issue of his health. Do not, do not forget that his Lordship, Honorable Justice Sinaku, made farishing orders regarding allowing him to bring his own personal physician to conduct independent investigation on his health status. These orders were flouted with impunity by, by the DSS. Of course, the DSS has a history of not obeying court orders. So we have to return of them. And that's part of the reason why we're in court of appeal today. So he's, he's, he's not being managed. He's, I can't say that his health is being managed by, yes, by, by SSS effectively. Because they don't have the facility to manage it. Of course, when he was in Kenya, he was subject to all forms of torture and ear treatment. So on account of that, he's still taking drugs today. So it is high time. That's part of the reason why the court ordered that he should allow him, they should allow him to bring in his personal physician, his personal doctor, medical doctor to come and examine him. This order has been flouted. She did. In fact, few days, few weeks in the past, few weeks ago, attempt was made at bringing a doctor that would come and see him. And they said no. They said no. So, so but these are facts before the court. And today, I'm thankfully, it's not uh, let us talk, uh, Chief. Michael Zekomi also mentioned to the court that he's sick and he needs to be treated, he needs to be, need to be granted for free for him to take his medical care of his medical, state, medical health condition. So because SSI has no facility to, 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 to treat it. Of course, there are way about, about there are way, you, 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 you are way, it's, all, it's also in the public domain about the depletion of his potassium content. Uh, to content. So these are serious health challenges that need medical support medical prompt medical and sophisticated medical attention expert attention so and they don't they don't have such facilities right they've been giving him drugs they they've been on trial and they uh, you know giving him drugs and belly base and whatnot so but we believe that there'll be freedom that will be that will be victory at the end of the day we're not relenting we're not giving rest we're not we're not giving any anything to towns we are all over the places with them we're in court of appeal we're in high court we're all over we have other, other actions to file against them so, and I believe God will worship on this federal face of this eight that Namdekan will regain his freedom sooner than expected. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any date so far from the appellate court? No, usually when they, when appeal is hard, they don't, they won't give the date. They, they can even come to work tomorrow and receive hearing notice that judgment will be delivered next tomorrow. So that's having their practice. That, that's the understand part of the court of appeal. They don't give date for giving for judgment. In other words, apart from that, we still have uh, November 14th on the table. Uh, we still have November 14th on the table, but I can assure you most strongly that something will happen before then. Take it from me. That's okay. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay, God bless you. Thank you, mm. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.